أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء وخاتم المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا بالقاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولا نتدام الباقي على عدائهم من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد Brothers and sisters in Iman, Salaamun Alaikum. Alhamdulillah, with the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, during this month, we got the opportunity to study the Qur'an. The surah that we have been reviewing very briefly is surah number 45, Surah Al-Jathiyah. And uh, we tried to cover as much as we can. Although the purpose was to go through it very briefly, uh, we still have, you know, tonight and tomorrow to conclude that. So we had to go a little bit faster. <coughs> uh, just to connect, connect with the theme of the ayat that we uh, discussed last night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after talking about uh, the example of Bani Israel, then he talked about the Prophet and the Muslims where he said that I have given you the Sharia, the code of practice which has come down from me. And then he mentions, you know, that there will be people who will be obeying it, those who will be disobeying, the good doers and the sinners. And in the ayat, uh, two ayats that we looked last night, basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifies that the root of the problem is worship of one's desire. Have you uh, seen a person who has taken his own hawa, his own desires, as his Lord? And that is the root of all the problems that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about in violation of his laws. To continue that discussion, of course, even in the ayat about the Sharia, Allah mentioned the issue of the Day of Judgment. That the whole purpose, Allah says that I'm not going to treat the good doers and the evil doers on the same level. No, the whole purpose of this dunya is test and trial. Then there will be resurrection and the day of judgment. And I'm going to, uh, you know, reward and punish people accordingly. And that theme is being brought again, especially in the context of the uh, belief of the people of Mecca. And so we come to ayat number 24, um, and the entire passage, about five ayat from here, I deal with this issue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins by saying, وَقَالُوا Referring to the people of Mecca, مَا هِيَ إِلَّا حَيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا نَمُوتُ وَنَحْيَا وَمَا يُهْلِكُنَا إِلَّا الدَّحْرِ وَمَا لَهُمْ بِذَلِكَ مِنْ عِلْمِ إِنْهُمْ إِلَّا يَظُنُّونَ the first line basically is their statement that the people of Mecca, the idol worshippers, although they believed in multiple gods, but they did not believe in the concept of the hereafter. And this is where we see that I say that, you know, this life in this dunya is the only life that we have. We will live and die and that's the end of the story. And, you know, even our death has nothing to do with, with God. It is a natural process. It is the dahr. It is the nature which, you know, brings about death upon us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to that by saying, وَمَا لَهُمْ بِذَلِكَ مِنْ عِلْمِ What they are saying, they don't know about it. They don't know the reality, what they don't know, um, you know, the extent of Allah's power and the purpose that He has sent human beings is the hereafter. In whom إِلَّا يَظُنُّونَ Whatever they are saying is basically based on their own assumptions. You know, it's just the guesswork, not really a, a, a view based on knowledge. To continue that theme, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا تُطْلَعَ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُنَا بَيِّنَاتِ مَا كَانَ حُجَّتُهُمْ إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا وَعِتُنَا بِآبَائِنَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Whenever the Prophet used to uh, talk to them about the Day of Judgment and that they will be raised back for judgment, uh, they used to always come up with this excuse or argument from their side. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says whenever we recited to them 
ayatuna bayinat, clear verses that we send. And even in this uh, surah, if you remember the earlier ayat, where Allah talks about the, um, the signs that he has created within us and outside us. You know, the heavens and the earth and the animals and the world and the earth itself. Um, these are all ayat and signs of Allah's uh, power, his existence and his presence in our life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says whenever we used to uh, send our ayat to them, their argument only was one when it came to the issue of Qiyamah. They will say, اِئْتُوا بِآبَائِنَا إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Bring our forefathers back to life if you are truthful in your claim. Now, it might seem this is a very simple, you know, challenge or request they have. Why didn't just the Prophet do that by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The way Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam was able to bring dead back to life, he could have done the same. But the issue is that these people were not really sincere in these kinds of requests. It was just, you know, excuse rather than a genuine, you know, quest to know what is the truth. Because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that you see all the signs. And later on he talks about the reality. He says, look at it. You know, reflect on what you have around yourself. Look at your own life. Allah is the one who has given you life, and He is the one who is going to give you death. Life and death is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثُمَّ يَجْمَعُكُمْ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ And He is the one who is going to resurrect you, bring you together on the day of um, Qiyamah. لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ There is no doubt about it. You know, this is, the, the theme is very similar to the last ayat of uh, Surah Yaseen. أَوَلَيْسَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْعَرْضِ بِقَادِرٍ أَنْ يُخْلَقَ مِثْلُهُمْ That the one who has created the heavens and the earth, and the one who created you from nothing, you know, he is qadir, he is capable of bringing you back. You know, the initial creation is more difficult, but reassembling you is much easier. And so Allah says, look at what you have. You don't need, you know, a demonstration to see that I can bring dead back to life. <clears throat> but the majority of the people, you know, don't know or don't want to know. And that is the problem with the mushrikeen of Mecca. Finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizing the same point. Not only that life and death, where he says, يُحْيِيكُمْ وَيُمِيتُكُمْ وَيَجْمَعُكُمْ in the previous ayat, that I give life, I give death, and I'm going to bring you back on the day of Qiyamah. Allah says, no, the whole universe is in my control. وَلِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْعَرْضِ To Allah belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَ يَوْمَعِذٍ يَقْصُرُ الْمُبْطِلُونَ That Allah is the absolute controller. He is the absolute master of the universe. And for him to resurrect you, bring you back to life is not a difficult thing. And on that day, the day of doom or the day of Qiyamah, when it happens, those who were deniers, Mubtilun, who were denying the hereafter, they are the ones who are going to lose on that day. What will happen on the day of uh, resurrection? كُلَّ أُمَّةٍ جَاثِيَةً كُلَّ أُمَّةٍ تُدْعَى إِلَىٰ كِتَابِهَا الْيَوْمْ تُنْزَوْنَا مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ هَذَا كِتَابُنَا يَنْطِقُ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْحَقِّ إِنَّ كُنَّا نَسْتَنْسِخُ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ This is an ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there is going to be two kind of, you know, uh, judgment. One is on individual basis. But this is something we don't really pay attention many times. There is also a judgment on a collective basis. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you will see every nation, you know, jathiyatan on the day of qiyamah, falling down on its knees, in a symbolic sense. Wa kulla ummatin ila kitabiha. Every nation will be summoned to its own record, besides the individual record that we have. And this is where the issue is that, you know, 
we as a community as a, or uh, as a qawm and an ummah are also collectively responsible for many things which happen. And if, you are, if we, uh, we were able to fulfill our own duty of amra bil ma'roof and nahi al-munkar, we are okay. But if not, then they, uh, we are also collectively responsible for what's happening. Hada kitabuna. And when the book, the scroll of deeds will be presented to people individually or as collectively as a nation, you know, and Allah says this book is the one which speaks truly against you. And we actually have been recording, nastansikhu, we have been recording whatever you were doing. And we know about the details that we have in the ayat of Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about even the angels, you know, who keep, who keep the record of all the uh, amal. There is actually one ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that on the day of Qiyamah, you know, some people will be really amazed by the detailed recording of the Nami Amal. And they will say, you know, what kind of book is this? لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة It doesn't even leave out anything. Even a minor issue has been recorded in there. And so uh, we realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after talking about Qiyamat now he's saying what is going to happen on that day. The conclusion of this uh, passage is basically فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And then later on وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Allah says, in general, there will be two groups on the day of Qiyamah. Those who have Iman and they do good deeds. فَيُدْخِلُهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ فِي رَحْمَتِهِ He's going to admit them into his mercy. ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْمُبِينَ That is the clear success. Not the success of this dunya, it is the akhirah. وَعَمَّا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا But those who disbelieve on the day of Qiyamah, أَفَلَمْ it will be announced to them that were not my verses recited to you, فَاسْتَكْبَرْتُمْ You became arrogant when the ayat of Quran were presented to you, وَكُنْتُمْ قَوْمًا مُجْرِمِينَ And you became guilty and sinning or sinner people. And so this is how we see that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, talks about qiyamah and concludes in that way. Inshallah, tomorrow we'll look at ayat number 32 to 37 uh, to conclude this surah. Uh, for tonight, well, let me end with a quiz because then we have a presentation after that. So we'll make things uh, brief today. Salawat wa rahmatullahi We are going today. Some of the questions is about what you heard yesterday. So it's a test of your memory. One of the ayahs that we discussed yesterday was the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَرَعِيتَ الَّذِي اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهُهُ هَوَا Now, the, what is the missing word there? Have you seen the person who has taken his parents as his Lord, or his desires as his Lord, or his wealth as his Lord? The answer is B. So even if you're not attentive yesterday, today I repeated it earlier anyway. <laughs> okay. Inhaling perfume in the state of fasting. It's okay, it is makru or it is haram? Huh? Who says it's haram? No, it's not a haram. It is makru. The elderly who cannot fast have to pay fidya. Now we had discussed this ayat about a week ago regarding the uh, rulings of fasting in Surah Baqarah. Um, and also, of course, we looked at the khutbah of the Prophet and the fatawa. So let us see. The word fidya itself comes from the Quran or the hadith of the masoom or the fatwa of a mushtahid. Which? 
Anyone remembers the number of the ayat? Not 183, 184. Yeah, 184. Surah Baqarah. This is where, you know, those who are elderly or have difficulty in fasting, you know, they're exempted from fasting and they have to pay fidya, which is 750 gram of flour or rice per day. <coughs> Lying is haram. However, which type of lie makes the rosa batil? Accusing someone falsely or ascribing falsely a statement to Allah or narrating a fabricated hadith? You know, for example, when we are told somebody was selling onions in Mecca, was not being sold. So you ask somebody and who just invented a hadith. Man akala, you know, whoever eats the, uh, the onion of Mecca, wajabat lahul jannah. Now I'm just quoting it, eh? otherwise I'll have a problem. <laughs> This is just the quotation of a story. So what would be the, uh, when we talk about fasting? Is it C or B or one? How many of you say it's B? How many of you say C? Actually both B and C would be valid. <coughs> now we know that lying is haram all the time. But in the month of Ramadan, that has been made a mubutil. It makes the fasting batil in a li li limited form. If somebody says, you know, in the state of fasting, knowing that he's just making up a statement that this is what Allah says, or this is what the Prophet or the Imam says, and it's not there, then not only that is haram, it is actually even making the fast batil. And if you look at the nine to ten items in the mubtilat of fasting, this is a very different one. It's dealing with our, you know, akhlaq. And this is just a, I would say Allah, uh, through the Prophet in the Sharia has been uh, graceful. Uh, that if any kind of lie would have been mubtil and would make the fast batil, then people would be in much more difficulty. But this is just an indication. Now this is also haram, you know, at night. Not only during daytime and in Ramadan. It's also haram in Sha'aban. It's also haram in Shawwal. But here the implication is that the fast becomes batil and a person would have to do the qaza as well as pay kafara. And just to remind that when it comes to this statement, and this is what I say many, many times, you know, our sixth Imam says when you do the fasting, remember it's not only refraining from food and drink, it is also from you know, your, your tongue has to fast, your eyes has to fast, your ears has to fast. And the biggest problem people will have is from the tongue. There is a hadith from Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salatu wa salam. Where he says that the tongue, he says, Jirmuhu sagheer wa jirmuhu kabir. It's the same word. You only, you know, change the signs. Jirm means the mass of this flesh of tongue is smaller compared to, you know, hand or other, you know, uh, things that we have on our face, for example. But the germ is kabir. The sin committed by the tongue is very serious. So we have to be careful. You know, I was reading one article about physical fitness and there they were saying, talking about exercise, you know, for the whole body, but they emphasize when it comes to the mouth and the lips and the tongue, this is overused. So we have to be careful, especially in the month of Ramadan, this is an indication that this is an area that we have to pay attention. Finally, the last question, the, the fast observed by Lady Maryam, and this is after the birth of Isa alayhi salam, uh, and the story is there in the Quran, it was to refrain from eating or talking or drinking. It was B. It was based on what Allah had asked us to do, her, uh, to do in Nazar. And that, that was a very special kind of fasting. 
you know, if this was the issue for us in Ramadan, we would have a lot of difficulties. <coughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to be true to the teachings of the Quran and the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt and may he always keep us among the true followers of Ali Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا ضاب النار برحمتك يا رحمن الرحيمين